So good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Thomas Kühnrich. I'm the moderator today of our Digital Tunnel 4.0 webinar. I'm welcoming right now in this second 264 participants. Thank you for joining. And uh, now we start officially with our webinar. And but before we start, I want to give you some uh, first insights and uh, something about what we need to talk before we start this meeting here. So we will start here. This is uh, our first slide. It's, it's a lot of text, but uh, initially I want to give you here the uh, overview about the involved companies. The involved companies today are uh, Ambeck Engineering and Ambeck Technologies, Siemens and at the Elko Group. So um, a little company profile here, Elko and um, sorry, Ambeck Engineering and Ambeck Technologies are based in Switzerland. They have more than 800 uh, project successfully uh, completed in this case in the last 15 years and they are 100% family owned and employing more than 300 people and they are available worldwide so this is um, um, Amberg Engineering and the speakers here today Veronica Petschen and uh, Aspeta Pokopova and next one is um, uh, my um, um, company here, Siemens, uh, I think it's known, it's based in Germany, founded a long time ago, 1847 in Munich. We have more than 380,000 employees here, and we are the special uh, list for design simulation, engineering software, automation and cloud, and we have also in tunnels focused products like Cinematic PLCs, WinCC, and HMI panels. Also, uh, in, in the ring, I will say here is the Elko Group, Yannick Durst from, from the business development. He will present the Elko part here. They are based in Liechtenstein and founded 1949. They have also around 300, 380 people employed, have more than seven business units here, and they are the specialists uh, for uh, customized safety doors for tunnels and power plants. All right, so these are the speakers here on our webinar. Okay. Maybe you're wondering why all those people are uh, doing together a presentation from different companies. The reason here is we have a tunnel digitalization center in Switzerland. There we are working closely together and showing our customers what does it mean, what is the bridge between the digital and the real world. And therefore we decided to have a unique <clears throat> um, yeah, area, uh, a tunnel, and there we are showing our customers the, the, the connection between those two um, worlds here. We are also showing them new technologies and innovative concepts and uh, making it much easier to understand complex um, yeah, projects, complex procedures in the tunnel environment. So, and we are able to show the entire life cycle of a tunnel system in the Hagerbach, Switzerland. So, and therefore, we are partners here and we are demonstrating all the steps from the idea to the finalized tunnel in the Hagerbach Center. And we are all together in the Hagerbach and all also today in our session here. And that's why we are working very closely together. Okay. So, and uh, so to, give, to give you a feeling how the Hagerbach digitalization center looks like, so th these are some impressions here. You can see there we have uh, um, the, the entrance of the Hagerbach. There you can see the techniques. You can see the, the, um, the digitalization center and some uh, feelings, what you can expect there. And you are welcome to be part of this or, or joining this. Um, if you are a system integrator, um, if you are an end customer and, uh, and also an operator, and if you're interested, you can uh, uh, give us an info later on after the session. Okay, so Elkuch, Amberg, and Siemens, and also HPI are working closely together here in this project. So when I mean the ent entire life cycle of a tunnel, then we are speaking about the idea. Let's say what you want to build a tunnel, then you have different steps to make, and everything now is made in the virtual world. So, and we will speak here about 3D. Um, 3D files, 3D creation, BIM modeling, and so on. And this goes step by step in the tunnel in our Hagerbach system. We will explain this step by step and also today in our webinar. And therefore, we start with the tunnel design, going to commissioning, engineering, 
we are talking about to open the real tunnel, what you can do with services and so on. And this is especially made for our planner system integrators, operators and customers. And, uh, and this is um, the overall path of digitalization, what all our companies can offer for you as an end customer system integrator or so on. Okay, so this is the overall story, how we present in the tunnel um, our customers the digitalization of tunnels and therefore we want to go in the, today's webinar and speak about the following topics. First of all, the building information modeling center. There we want to talk about 3D modeling, instant state modeling, scanning, so scanning the whole surface of the tunnel, this could be something for retrofit or new tunnels. Then we want to speak about control and training center, how we show in the virtual world everything to our customer, how we train the PLC code and so on, everything is here. Then we are switching over to the simulation center, we are doing the final test before we build something in the real world. And then we switch over to the cloud center where we have also the possibility to get real tunnel data in, into the cloud and uh, we can do a lot with this like predictive maintenance of tunnels. This is the message here of the cloud center. And then, yes, we will have time um, for your questions. And uh, we have also a poll here if you like this webinar and want to get more information. All right, so this is how it looks like for the moment. And this is a real picture from our Hagerbach Center. And normally there is um, Veronica here and she stands on the left side at the BIM Center. And, but we can't be at the Hagerbach Center at the moment. That's why we are here in the webinar. And now I'm handing over the first slide to Veronica. Veronica, are you there? And can you please take over? Yes, I'm here. Cool, then it's yours. If I could have. Or I can click through, it's also no problem, yeah? Okay, I cannot have the control of your no, mouse. Then, then I, will, I will click, you say next slide, okay? Then okay. let's go to it. So good morning from Regensdorf. Uh, for today, my main focus is going to be uh, the digital twin itself. And uh, the basis for that is the more than uh, 50 um, beam project that the Omberg group has uh, already involved to with uh, several use cases. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> Wait, we have a little delay here, so don't be confused. Okay. <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs> next slide or this slide? A next slide. Yes. Yeah, there's a video inside, so that's that's the thing. Okay, this one. Yeah, so here uh, you can see the use cases that we normally show in the digitalization center. For today, uh, I picked the uh, very beginning and the uh, end of the life cycle. I would like to tell you in a, in a nutshell how to create a digital twin. And uh, in a, a second uh, part, I would like to uh, show you how we use uh, digital twins for uh, operation. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, digital twin uh, doesn't only have to be able to interconnect the phases, uh, but uh, the discipline-specific models too. It's very important, uh, uh, and it has to be also be adapted or connected to data banks, uh, cloud uh, systems, or real-time information. Next slide, please. Uh, Digital Twin is a, a three-dimensional georeference model. Uh, the soul of it is machine readability in order to ensure uh, digital continuity that happens uh, through uh, uh, that uh, it's created uh, with information uh, via standardized interfaces and uh, data formats. Uh, and that's the common basis for all specific technical models too. Next slide, please. 
very shortly said, uh, digital twins uh, unify uh, the data about geometry, geography, and metadata uh, using adapted open data format and interfaces that has to be adapted to the client's needs all the time. Next slide, please. So now I would like to uh, show you very briefly how do we create uh, digital twins. Next, please. Uh, no matter if it's uh, for a refurbishment project and uh, we have to do SBIAD modeling or we use more parametric design for repetitive elements or totally new constructions, um, initial state modeling is also important. Uh, it means uh, uh, import the axis, the geological layer, the digital talent modeling, surrounding scannings and building models based on scan uh, in order to uh, put the tunnel in uh, its uh, constants to add the new construction uh, to its network. Next one, please. From initial uh, uh, state modeling, uh, I picked uh, uh, the geology modeling because it's one of my uh, personal favorites, uh, because tunnels are built in and with the ground itself. That's why the surrounding geology is uh, very important uh, to understand. Uh, Thomas, uh, can you please uh, start the video too? Uh, and, and may maybe for the this... part sorry, sorry, Veronica, for the participants, I will start the uh, stop the video. Uh, I heard some of you have uh, problems to to get the audio. So in this case, please restart uh, and log in, re-log into the webinar. I'm sorry for that, but I want to announce okay. that please restart. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I will restart okay. the video again. Okay. Now it's working. Veronica, it's your turn. Veronica, hello? It seems that she's also has left. Again, uh, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect. So, yeah, so, you, you don't have to leave the the other guys. So <laughs> I thought you were you were gone. <laughs> okay. So now it's your turn. So uh, by doing a, a three-dimensional uh, geology model, you can avoid uh, projection problems from data about drillings and in kilometer results and better understand what to expect inside of the mountain uh, or sliding the um, sliding horizons. Uh, obviously the geology model uh, you can uh, unify with the with the other uh, models of the structures of the structure uh, and um, during the construction phase you can uh, also add ev every information for example about the excavation phases. So please, next slide. Okay. And start the video, please. Walking. So the basis of uh, SPIAD modeling uh, is uh, the laser scan itself that uh, as beta uh, going to present in detail a bit later. Uh, the result of the scanning is a point cloud describing uh, the surface of the construction. From that, we create uh, a mesh uh, to get the real surface. With this, we can do the as-built elements as they were built, and then we add metadata to each of them and integrate all the discipline specialist models like the air cooked or uh, that Yannick is going to present later on. Okay. Next slide. Yes, next slide, please. Here, 
I just uh, pick one example for metadata. This, this one is a list for rails uh, that we uh, fill out for our clients. Uh, I only wanted to show you how much information uh, it can be related uh, only to one element. And next one, please. Okay. Um, as for new construction and in the uh, case of repetitive elements, uh, creating them parametrically has a lot of advantages. Uh, the, uh, the most important of them is that we can handle the changes uh, very uh, efficiently in a smart way uh, because I can define the dependencies too. Oh, I, I guess we have to. Uh, make... hmm? Want to see the video or what do you mean? Okay, it's also good. Uh, I uh, I quit the slide. Uh, no problem. So uh, what okay. what we do with the uh, geology model and uh, the rest of the model uh, is that uh, we can integrate it uh, in the digital terror model in a GIS system. Uh, and then uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, as for the parametric design, uh, it's very e efficient because uh, if I want to uh, introduce a change, uh, it's, uh, I can define the, the dependencies. For example, uh, if I de uh, define that my banquet is always uh, one meter uh, bright, uh, then it stays one meter bright, even if I change the uh, inner diameter of the tunnel. Uh, and during this time, maybe other elements would change uh, proportionally uh, to this uh, uh, changed parameter too. Okay. Next one, please. Mm. Okay. So Last rapid engineering. Mm -hmm. Rapid engineering is the repetitive use of uh, parametric elements. Uh, very simply said, uh, like an extern smart copy paste. Uh, for example, designing very similar tubing elements along the curve uh, by changing uh, their coordinates. Next one, please. So the main added value uh, by using digital twins is that we can uh, avoid planning errors uh, by um, a collisions check uh, and virtual tours uh, during the uh, planning phase. And we can very efficiently uh, introduce uh, changes in the planning. We can use common data environments uh, for uh, the three dimension uh, information and uh, the GIS and geology information with all the technical models itself in a central coordination model that means reduce project duration and faster planning processes. Uh, we can also use these digital twins for many simulations uh, and uh, use it to be in the field. Uh, mm -hmm. But now I would like to give a, give a word to Azbeta to uh, tell us a bit more about laser scanning and uh, uh, their beam to field options. Azbeta, mm -hmm. can you do it? Yes, thank We're you, there. Veronica. And now we will look a bit more in detail uh, how to transfer data from field to the BIM model and back. Um, because as was already mentioned, it's important to first do the laser scanning. So first get the data about the real world so we can do the model that actually fits to the real world. So usually we collect uh, images 3D point cloud, that would be the most important part of the data collection. Then we can also directly scan 3D assets, uh, rail track, geometry, or overhead wire in case we are talking about train tunnels or train tracks. It basically does not matter if we have the scanner and the cameras on the train, like in this case, or uh, for example, on some smaller ro robot or for some tunnels which actually do not have the tracks or on some completely different carrier, like for example, the trolley or a car, or in some cases it can be even uh, uh, some flying device, let's say. 
it's not so common in tunnels, but for example, for the new tunnels to map the terrain, it can be very efficient way. However, we collect the data, it's important to collect the data uh, with good accuracy and uh, good density. So then we can use it to create the BIM model as the first product. And later on, as we will see, we can also use it, for example, for asset detection or uh, geometrical analysis. And also then in the maintenance phase of the tunnel, we can reuse it for tunnel inspections. But let's start from the beginning of the story. Uh, so we used mobile mapping to collect our scan data and the pictures. And then we used it as Veronica described to create a BIM model or 3D model. Um, and once we have this 3D model, the next thing is to go back to the, to the reality because now we have our perfect design. We know how the project should look like. And now we have to make sure that uh, in the real world, the construction will look the same. So then we basically bring this model again back to the field. And here is, for, uh, for example, a profile measurement. So this is one way how to check that we are building the tunnel in the way we want it and minimize overbreak and underbreak. So also minimize the costs. Another option is again, laser scanning where we get higher density of the data and we can um, position the scanner directly in the tunnel and then scan the tunnel and get the results directly in the field. It is important, sometimes it is really important to get the results in the field um, because it saves a lot of time. So for example, if we can directly know if the tunnel is built correctly, um, then we don't have to go to the office and back to, to get the results. Another good example is the layer thickness of the sprayed shotcrete that it's really useful to have the result as soon as five or 10 minutes after spraying. So if there are some reworks needed or the layer thickness is not good enough, then it's much easier to fix it than let's say a few hours later. Another example when the tunnel is finished is scanning of the of the finished tunnel we can use again some kind of mobile mapping for that and we can use this data for example for the clearance profile so we make sure that uh, our tunnel is big enough so the train will actually fit and we can make sure that there is no nothing in the collision uh, with the train So it's, it's great to have all these results directly in the field, but then also we have to go back to our digital model and do the documentation of what we built. So we do the as-built analysis so we can compare uh, all the data with the 3D model. We can do the volume calculations, which is especially important because uh, many companies are paid based on the volumes. And we can also check some other things like for example, track parameters. Uh, so to wrap it up, uh, basically we have a uh, real world and the digital model and BIM to field and field to BIM uh, serves us to make sure that those models or that those worlds are as close together and align one with the other and then analyze the differences. And in the end, we are confident that we actually built the construction or the tunnel that we designed. Okay, thank you very much. But uh, now the next thing is, let's talk about doors, which are always needed in the tunnel. So therefore, Yannick, please give us some insights here. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. So already in the planning phase, we have many advantages through digitalization. 
With the tunnel's digital twin, we can evaluate situations which will cause problems for our doors and are able to solve them in an early stage of the project. The digital twin, which you can see here on the picture, for our sliding model, in which the door element in which the door elements are already mounted outside the tunnel in the wall units allows us to see what problems we will encounter during the installation phase in the in advance. Thanks to the digital twin, we can see which door needs to be at which place, with what pressure the door will be exposed, and how far the access for the installations are going to look like. So thanks to that, our customer can evaluate exactly which door he needs at what place. This whole system, including the slide-in model, is built and tested in the Hagerbach in Switzerland. Irrespective of whether it is a new tunnel or a renovation, all situations can be digitally represented and the right concept can be chosen. The result is which doors have to be installed at which time in order to ensure, ensure a smooth process. Also, a lot of interfaces between the doors and other components can be mapped digitally. For example, the status of signalization like lightning and ventilation in the event of an incident. That's it for my part, Thomas. Good. Okay, Thank thanks. You. Uh, thank you very much for, for your insights here. So um, I saw there in the call are some questions, but uh, uh, please, please, uh, we will do that um, after the cloud center when we are at the end of the session. Otherwise, we are not going through. We are not uh, meeting the time frame to end at around 12 o'clock. Okay, so your questions are not forgotten. Okay, so uh, what you see here is our control and training center and simulation centers. That means we uh, created the 3D data, the tunnel data in the cloud uh, and in, in the in the 3D model and enrich them with the BIM data. And also we know exactly how the 3D model looks like. We can show this to to our uh, end customers or operators. You can do also on a very early stage trainings and. Uh, but here we want to focus more on the automation part. That means that we equip the tunnel virtually with, uh, with PSC, with the uh, control system. And uh, it's very important that you can test all the systems on a very early stage. And therefore, this is our new headline here for, for uh, Siemens tunnel digitalization automation. We will say uh, the tunnel is ready before it's built. But what does that mean, especially here? Uh, I will give you the answer. The answer here is the, the tunnel is a very com complex yeah, building here. And you have there a lot of things like ventilation, you have the, the lightning, you have the, the emergency doors and so on. And all those things have to be tested before something is built. And yes, and we can do that with our 3D software. And this is the reason why we said ready before it's built, we can show exactly the behavior of the tunnel, the 3D model of the tunnel to our customers. You know exactly on a very early stage what's happening when we're opening the tunnel here. And it's very uh, important in that case that we really make sure that the ventilation is working in case of an accident or a fire. So that needs to be, be proved and so on. And therefore we have special tools to prove that, also the lightning and so, and, and also the escape uh, emergency doors. And I will show you that here, how we are gonna do that in, uh, in a live situation. Therefore, we uh, designed a special tool and everybody can access th uh, this tool. It's called uh, Siemens.com tunnel automation. And there you can find the tunnel automation feature. And I'm focusing and speaking now about the commissioning part, which is marked yellow. Uh, sorry, red. So, and if you click on this, then you come to a special section and we will tell our customers in special little webinar uh, blocks how this works. So, and the focus now here is we can check two of, or in this case, three things. We want to check if the PLC, the semantic controller works fine. So if there is no, uh, no problem in the code, and we were also checking the WinCCUA in this case. This is our tunnel control system. If when we click the button for ventilation, this will also work in the 3D model. So this is what we check. And third, 
uh, we can also check with our ventilation model from HBI. We can do an advanced testing if with the behavior model works everything properly, our PLC code and also the control center software. Okay, so and first of all, we're doing here some basic tests. What you see there on the picture uh, on the left side is our uh, HMI uh, surface, the Winces UA, and there you can see a tunnel with ventilation and also with, um, with traffic signs and so on. And there we are going to manual mode and going through the test routine and uh, switching on uh, that, that we say 15 kilometers per hour or 100 kilometers per hour, giving those information from the controller code to the 3D model. It's all virtually tested here. And you can see the results on the screen, on your screen, which we have later also in your controller room. Yeah. And we can do here a, a, a lot of other tests. You can see there the airflow, the CO2 emission, which is in the tunnel. And this has a feedback to the controller code. So if you have a lower density in the tunnel, you have to ventilate even more and make the light much brighter uh, in this case. And all those uh, combinations you are able to test virtually here. And uh, therefore we are doing this test with the 3D model here. What we can also do is, as you can see there on the right side, upper left side, this is our controller, our, our high-end controller, Simatic 7500, which is normally used uh, in the tunnel environment. Uh, and on the left side there, you can see the TIA portal. The TIA portal is our engineering tools where we engineer all our components for, in this case, for the tunnel, our HMI panels, our controllers, and also our uh, drives here in this case, in the PLC. And it's a little bit tiny, I know that, but it's only for visualization here. There we have values which we can, we are able to check and we connected the TIA portal here in this case to check uh, if, ever, if your value is working properly with the NX MCD, the Motion Me Mechatronics Concept Designer here in this case. And then we are doing also a very basic testing if the ventilation works, if the road signs are working, the camera system works and so on. And also the portal lights are, are going through. So, and, uh, and if I'm typing in here a value, so that has a direct feedback to the 3D model to N NX MCD. So with these two tests, we tested already the PSC basic code and also um, the visual visualization system, but this is only on a very basic level. And we have here also a very uh, special advanced testing, I would uh, call it like this. It has the same meaning. We're testing the controller code and also the visualization and the WinCC UA here, but it's much more specific. So we can have here, uh, relations between the software and and also later on the hardware we can simulate it here on a very uh, advanced level so what you see there on the left side is again the WinCC UA surface but there's a very specific tunnel project you can see there the parts of the corridors of the tunnel you can see that the CO2 emission which is in the tunnel at the moment and there we can do some scenarios one scenario in that case, what you see there on the little uh, monitor, there's a fire in one of the corridors in the tunnel. What you have to do is you have to react very quickly as an operator. So, and the system indicates you where is the fire, what, uh, which wind you have in this section, in this uh, special section of the tunnel. And therefore what you have to do is to yeah, do uh, increase the ventilation opening the flaps here in the tunnel to yeah to eliminate to yeah reduce the fire and that the traffic can go through the tunnel again so this is one of the scenarios what you can do here you can uh, check if the airflow through the tunnel is appropriate for your special situations in the tunnel and this is the most advanced controller test what we can do and again this is all in the real uh, in the in the virtual world so you know exactly the behavior of your PLC code when you are finishing and opening the tunnel here. Okay, so and uh, what are the real benefits here? It's uh, that we um, have an open uh, PLC standard that we can connect to us to nearly every behavior model, like here the HPA ventilation simulator with the 
OPC UA interface that allows us to do the connection between the, the model and our software here. So we can um, verify the PSC functionality on a very early stage and speed up the commissioning to a higher level. Yeah? And we can also reduce the cost for fire tests. And as, as you know, an IQ here is the specialist and he knows exactly what a fire test costs. So with this virtual test, you can reduce this to a, a minimum. Yeah. So, and again, so this is, uh, we are also here in the marketing. So this is uh, overall, um, the overall benefits here. You need less time for commissioning and you can open at the end the tunnel even faster than before. Okay, so after we checked everything in the virtual world, we are now safe that we can now do the final construction of the tunnel. We are, we are uh, bringing in the equipment, the, the automation, the lights, the, the camera systems, the, the ventilation, all that is now in the tunnel. And now the digitalization is not over. So we have also a lot of possibilities how we can uh, use the data of the open tunnel. And uh, therefore, I want to give uh, the word now to, um, to Veronica again, and she will tell us something about what we can do with cloud in the real tunnel. So Veronica, can you hear me? Yes. Still there? Yes, uh, I'm here. Cool. So now it's I yours. I try to get the control of the mouse. Okay, otherwise, is it working? But um, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't seem like it works, mm. no. However, I'm doing the next so slide. Please, okay. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we are by the last and the longest uh, phase of the life cycle of tunnels that by the operation. And uh, I would like to uh, show you uh, quickly what our uh, concept of um, retrofitting is. Uh, please, next one. Mm -hmm. So uh, the main uh, challenges uh, by uh, retrofitting, uh, doing uh, SB models uh, for operation uh, are uh, that uh, the maintenance processes uh, are always made during operation and the tunnels must be um, open all the time. The costs are always very high and uh, I have been working for 10 years uh, in maintenance of tunnels and there are always lost data uh, even if there are data structures they are always very complicated and there are always uh, uh, asset management problems due to data management too um, and uh, it's not that obvious to present uh, dynamic data especially on the long term and as for modeling problems, the old structures are always irregular. And next one, please. Um, so uh, our concept is uh, doing a central model, a digital uh, documentation of the tunnel with all the relevant information uh, where uh, you can uh, get the data uh, in a very intuitive way. It means you can click uh, on the element itself and you get the relevant uh, information. Uh, we uh, link uh, data via standardized interfaces and uh, in order to resolve the difficulties uh, with, uh, with the modeling of uh, irregular uh, elements, uh, we have uh, softwares for automatic and semi-automatic semi edge detection that uh, make these processes much faster. Next one, please. The main difference uh, among uh, digital twins for other life cycle phases and uh, the operation phase is uh, the content of information. Uh, for example, logistical information for the constructions are not relevant uh, anymore. Uh, but the clearance profile analysis are very important or the inspection uh, surveying data is very important. The groundwater analysis uh, and uh, many information about the railway or road uh, installations are very relevant. 
Next one, please. Sometimes uh, there's a little delay. Overview, it's uh, also a key for data management. Uh, so one of our uh, suggestion is using GIS platform uh, in order to uh, to uh, unify the geographical uh, graphical and the metadata uh, on one screen uh, presented together uh, in this case in uh, ArcGIS uh, you have the overview of the location of all your B models uh, chosen B model itself and now uh, on the left you can see uh, inspection data about uh, the state of the structure. Next one, please. Uh, the OMBA group has also uh, many sensors uh, in order to observe uh, the good state uh, of uh, tunnels, uh, like inclinometers, piezometers, extensometers, uh, crack meters, and so on. And the information from these sensors uh, is also very important to understand and to observe. The next one, please, Thomas. See. So you can also integrate your sensor information on the same uh, platform. Uh, what uh, you can see on the left, uh, still uh, you are by your uh, chosen uh, beam model with all the metadata uh, inside and you have um, a geographical overview. It's a very nice way to uh, to observe uh, dynamic real-time information too. Next one, please. And uh, could you please uh, start uh, the video also? Yeah. I mentioned uh, inspections uh, that are regularly uh, done and are very important uh, for predictive maintenance. We have uh, a new uh, software platform called uh, Ambag Inspection Cloud. Uh, that's um, a cloud-based system. Uh, you can work offline and online in it. It means if you work online that the client can see in real time what damages you are entering in. Uh, it has uh, many features, uh, for example, comparing the periodical inspections. You can see you can play with the layers and you can see the changes. But uh, what is really amazing about this software that it also has an artificial intelligence tool that helps us uh, recognizing uh, damages automatically and we don't have to enter them manually. Uh, it means a huge gain uh, in speed for the preparation of the inspection itself, because by uh, using uh, the grayscale pictures of a uh, um, laser scanner, you can uh, predefine uh, every uh, or the many damages and only check them uh, on the site. That means uh, really shorter uh, closure times for the infrastructure. Uh, it's also very important to mention that we use uh, open interfaces and uh, we can uh, uh, adapt or, uh, or uh, connect ourselves to third-party cloud applications. Uh, we also have uh, other cloud applications uh, for, the, uh, for the rail infrastructure, for example. If you wish, we can uh, deliver more information about them. So to summarize the main main uh, advantages of uh, digital twins for operation. Uh, it's a really nice method to visualize static and dynamic infra information from everything that is really relevant for uh, the structure. It means transparent uh, transparency and a facilitated communication and rapid problem-oriented uh, data retrieval and a trouble-free operation of the tunnel as a consequence uh, and uh, what's uh, even more important that it saves also uh, cost. Okay. So, want to add something, Veronica? Yes, or, uh, otherwise, uh, Yannick is there again. Um, I'm asking Yannick again. Um, okay, we have now spoken about the, the uh, tunnel system in total, but uh, what about emergency doors? Um, 
can we have also status from from the doors in the real tunnel uh, yannick is this possible or yes no? that's possible we have two phases the construction phase and the commission phase first of all to the construction phase our sliding models are being monitored with an appropriate rfid code which shows the exact position in the tunnel using the slide-in model which you can see on the picture, we have already reduced the installation time in the tunnel by 80% and we expect even more with the progressing digitalization and its advantages. At the commissioning of the tunnel, the doors are being monitored and sent data to the customer. Beside the usual information, is the door open or closed? The Siemens Drive C door detects other parameters about the door's technical state. For example, the dynamic pressures generated during the passage of trains at different speed, the static pressures which are applied to the doors in QA, the door leaves opening force or the opening quantity. At the customer's request, request, we also have the possibility to monitor and control different types of loads and environmental conditions on the door using various sensors and transmit all data to the control center. Based on the data obtained, it is also possible to calculate maintenance intervals for doors and to de determine maintenance schedules more efficient. All this data can be recorded, stored and evaluated if the customer wants it and of course is willing to release the data for evaluation. With the help of this vari variety of information, we already have the possibility to analyze the data with the software to evaluate, to evaluate it to recognize if the door still corresponds to the technical state of the art or if it needs maintenance and if so, what is its level of urgency. Other possibilities we have regarding the digitalizations are maintenance instructions and spare part lists can be called up via QR code on the door direct ordering of spare parts during maintenance work or more precise control of previous maintenance. So in our, in our opinion, it, it's essential to work with this new digital tool in future large scale projects. As already mentioned, we have uh, the same advantage, advantages here. Those are uh, re reducing the costs of, for ourselves and the customer from the planning phase up to the maintenance ensure compliance with the construction schedule and increase the overall safety of the tunnel. Okay, Yannick, that sounds great. Okay. So yeah, you have, have spoken uh, something about how the data gets out from the from the door, the condition data, that's a, a good point here. Yeah. So uh, we are always able to, to acquire the, the condition data from, from motors and also from door opening and closing systems and this is also called CDOR. So and there we can use the data and, and uh, prove them and uh, check for anomalies. Yeah. So if there's something wrong with the motor in this case and this could be a very early indicator that we have to do something before something happens with, with, the, with the door in this case or with the ventilator. So but this is only theory. So um, how does it look like in the real world here? as an operator, for example. Therefore, we have um, developed a special tool. It's called Smart Operator from Siemens. And uh, you can access it um, just, uh, to this presentation here on the Siemens.com tunnel automation and go to Smart Operator. And there you can see, so this is normally the, the start point from this little app here. Um, as an operator, you get also trigger or information from your tunnel. So that means you get a pop-up message like an email. Um, you can uh, get also a monthly or weekly report uh, about your tunnel. And in this case, we received a message that in the San Fidel tunnel, there is a, a trigger request and uh, caused at 9.48 um, p.m. In this case, what you're doing is you're logging in to your smart operator app with your, with your ID and your password. And then you can see there this is your smart operator overview. So, and and what is uh, normal life here? That you have one controller room and uh, controlling a lot of tunnels in your environment. 
And there you can see um, that you have alerts, you have information, you have reports. And in this case, you have in the San Fidel tunnel one alert, which means that you have to, to analyze it and have to do something. So let's have a closer look what's happening here in, the, in this tunnel. There you can see, okay, um, this is the power consumption of the fan. This could be also the power consumption of the C door, the door opener of, of the of the Elkhoch door in this case here. And there you can see that the power consumption of the fan is much higher than normal. So you have a lot of data from, from other motors and there you can see, okay, this is beyond the level which could cause some, some uh, problems to the winding. And, and uh, if the motor gets harder and harder, he will fail someday. And with this technique, you, with the sensors of the motor and also from the door, you can avoid such downtimes. And this is the overall goal, what we are doing here. So we, we're gathering the data from, from, the, from the motor, uh, um, um, uh, beaming, <laughs> that's the, the, wrong, the right, uh, wrong word. We are uploading the data to our to our industrial cloud, which is called MindSphere in this case. And then you will have the possibility to get those reports on a daily work, uh, weekly or monthly basis. And at the end, you have also the possibility um, that you create a maintenance entry. So that means your working crew has have to look for for this tunnel segment here. You see there, okay, it's the idea that could be the, the motor ID which you have in your system. You can see where it is. You see that the value when it happens and so on. And then you can say, check the functionality and so on. Um, and you can say also when the maintenance has to be done. This is the big advantage here. You can select on your own when you want to have the maintenance and not, and this is not a surprise egg. So if you don't have this connection to the cloud, you can do, then it's a surprise for you when when something is wrong with the motor. But with the direct cloud connection here, you have a lot of value adds. And this is one of those that you can see there and you can also track everything. And you can see there when there was the last maintenance and also, and this is also a, a big value add, which uh, Elkuch offers here and Siemens also has the QR code directly on the motor that you can order the parts for your doors or for the motor in this case, um, and uh, have a very quick reaction time. Okay. So, and uh, and last but not least, I'm coming now to the, the last slide here. There you can see again, this is our maintenance list. You can see what which asset is affected, what, what was the problem, and this uh, is uh, finally the maintenance list for the, the service engineer, and he can access to it worldwide. And, he, and uh, if he goes to the tunnel, he can bring the right spare parts already with him. So this is a, a great feature, what we can offer here. Okay. okay. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs> <laughs>